David, uh, pleasure to meet you. Uh, we're here with David Shing at a from AOL, uh, Digital Profit at AOL at Dublin Web Summit. Uh, David, uh, Digital Profit is one of those coolest titles I've ever seen, uh, but everyone I meet, whether it's through email or internet or social, who has an interest in the internet always tries to be a, social, a digital profit. Uh, could you describe your job really uh, at AOL and how, how it manifests and what AOL does? Yeah, so look, uh, that's a great question. Thanks for asking. I was a head of media and marketing for AOL in Europe. My part-time job was education. I realised that the marketplace needed better education on digital, where it's going. Bit, I'm an old digital maven. I've been in the space for you know 15, 16 years. So you know it comes from experience. It comes from understanding sort of the head of the curve of where things are at, and just being able to contextualise that in a great storytelling way that makes people feel like they're empowered to, to carry on. I'm really excited about the, the form of digital right now. So to have a profit allows me to be able to to talk to the marketplace, clients, agencies, consumers and just sort of juice them up about where the future's at and sort of able to do that. Now why AOL has one of those is that we are in the, we're on the, the business of helping people. So you know, part of my job is an educator. So I come in and I help facilitate to, again, clients, agencies, consumers about what the future is. And with that, it helps bring our brand reputation up because I have some you know, strategic thinkers in the house like myself. In terms of uh, some of the trends, I mean, uh, so much has happened so quickly. I mean, I was just talking to a guy from Google and I was talking about how 14 years or 15 years ago it was two guys running around Stanford with a credit card being maxed out buying servers to today we're talking about mobile, we're talking about social. And ultimately, the battle is trying to blend all that and be effective. Uh, what would be your advice for brands or for businesses that are just trying to just be relevant and stay relevant? Well, look, you've locked on a couple of things. Firstly, by the way, it is still like the Wild West. Now technology is easier to build, so guys can run around with a credit card and max it out and build something as an infrastructure just like Google did back 17 years ago. You can do it today, you can just do it on Ruby on Rails, you can do it with other technologies that allow you to scale. It just happens to be more polished, so that's one thing we need to clarify. And the second thing is, you know, you said to be relevant. There are three R's that people need to understand. They need to be reactive, they need to be relevant, and they need to be remarkable. And if you actually can't answer those three questions or those three statements authentically, then i got to ask whether why they would be in it. Because a lot of people have land grabbed or rushed into the environment of being social and all these sort of environments, not fully understanding that this is actually a marathon, not a sprint. So you have to be very careful about the way you go into it because you've got to come into it very authentically. So those three R's combined with authenticity I think is a really promising thing. One of the big trends that I'm finding is that social is important, but it's, social isn't the means of be all of end all. And it's not just two websites, it's not Twitter, it's not Facebook. Everything we do online is potentially social. So what can you do to fuel those conversations? What can you do to what I call build liquid content? Stuff that has conversations, that does connected, and also just enables people to pass on your brand as it goes. That's really important to understand you know, the value of what those things are. In terms of uh, the landscape ahead, I mean, when you look at now, I mean, I, I, I get so excited just carrying my, I look at an iPhone 5 and I go, oh my God, and that's because that's I'm a bit of a fan of that. But the actual things that get you excited about the next six, 12 months, everyone wants to know the future, but nobody, a few years ago, people were talking about, you know, uh, would Apple ever get into the phone business? And then, you know, what do you see as kind of some of the trends that you can't discount? You know, I think there's a couple of things at the moment that's still exciting. I mean, it's, augmented's been around for a lot of years. It just hasn't been done commercially well. So I think augmented reality is going to come back in a big, in a, sorry, it's going to evolve into a way that makes a lot of sense. I think the concept of digital wallet is going to become even more important, but more importantly, geofencing. So the ability, let me give you a classic example. You said Apple. So if I go into the Apple store and I use the Apple store, store app, um, what happens is it, it changes into an actual register. So I can go up to a product, I can just literally scan it, and I can buy it and it gets built to my iTunes account. As opposed to when I'm outside the store, it's geofenced. I can't. All I can do is give information and I can order it. But I'd have to order it through the traditional web manner. So the geofencing and the ability for people to transact at the right time, right place with the consumer is at that value is very important. So I no longer have to be at the cash register. I am the cash register. And so digital walleting, augmented reality, but also gestures. So this is completely overlooked. But Xbox and Kinect, man, they own the living room. So when you think about your expression, I don't believe this human expression is, is valued just to the tip of my finger. It's all about gestures and gestural technologies. So I, will, I think what we're going to see in hardware is far more gestural technology, which means it can be far more expansive and far more expressive. And we're, we've only, we haven't even scratched the surface on where I think we're going to go with gestures. Um, AOL uh, as, a, as a company, I mean, it's made some very interesting moves in the last while. Bought TechCrunch, bought a Huffington Post. Uh, you also have a, a large uh, embedded base in Dublin where the guys work on the content management system technology. Uh, could you tell me about the media landscape and AOL's role in it uh, going into the future, but also then Dublin's role in that? Yeah, okay, so uh, thanks, for the, thanks for acknowledging that. Multi-parted question too, which is great. AOL um, is heavily invested in our differentiation when you compare us to the other media partners is content. 
So we're all in on content, man. And content is not just text, but it's text, audio, video, all combined into an experience. So what we're trying to do is also add participation into that. So that's a fuel, that's a social fuel that Huffington Post has given us, is the ability to make sure participation today is limited to comments, but I think participation in the future will be far more active around mobile. So the ability to have video, real-time, uh, pictures and text all thrown into, into the way that participation is going to work is something that I think we're going to fuel. Um, our, so again, our differentiation is about content. Um, our relevancy is around mobile, so we're doing a lot of things that are mobile first, so we believe in that. So we're not just a loss leader, we're actually building out mobile first experiences. And how Ireland really plays into it, and particularly Dublin, because we have about 155 people here. We announced, I think it was this week, that we're actually going to, um, we have a, another, another 35 new postings available in, in Ireland. It's very important for us for two reasons. One, we've established in Ireland many years ago, because we really did an anchor in Europe. The second thing is, um, great engineering here. They're bloody smart. And we believe in the value of what engineering believes, because, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a going to be a change and a step change in the blend, which is it's not just the CIO or the CTO that holds the purse strings to the tech, the CMO is going to. So the more we value what tech does and the more it bridges what we want to do in marketing, we're going to have a utopian moment. But we're not even there yet. I don't think AOL as a company, I don't think we've even realised the value of that yet, but we will. And I think that's going to be a future scape. So investing more in tech uh, intelligently to help us understand what engineering looks like for the future of the CMO and the desktop and the dashboard for the team over the future, I think we've just scratched the surface of that as well. But we're very heavily committed to Dublin still.